Dear students, in this video, we will learn about an important concept of Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. Now, in our last videos, we have learned about that how we can project any vector on a given line or also discuss the generic case where we can project a vector in some space into its subspace. So, what this Gram-Schmidt decomposition or orthogonalization gives us that would be interesting to see. Now we have learned that we always want to deal with orthonormal bases as they offer a lot of mathematical convenience. Their first mathematical convenience comes from the fact that if two basis vectors they are orthogonal to each other we would always have that B B transpose where B composes of all the basis vectors put in a matrix format equal to identity and hence calculation of inverse and so uh, other attributes becomes much easier. Moreover, in many systems we are so familiar to deal with the Cartesian coordinates which are de denoted by B1 equal to 1 0 and B2 equal to 0 1 and they happen to be orthonormal bases as their inner product and specifically dot product is equal to 0 as well as their magnitudes or respective magnitudes is equal to 1. Now the question arises what to do if we are given two bases which are not orthogonal to each other because it's not necessary that all the bases with respect to which all the vectors in a given subspace can be expressed they are going to be perpendicular or orthonormal to each other or in fact orthogonal to each other in general terms. Remember that orthonormality would mean that the magnitude of vector is 1, orthogonal would mean that the magnitude can, could be anything but the dot product or the inner product of these two vectors is going to be 0. So if this is a vector b2 and we have b1 here and this is the b1 and b2 they happen to be the basis of some space under consideration let us say Rn. Now we want to identify or find the basis u1, u2 all the way till un if this happens to be an n dimensional Rn and similarly here we will have b1 b2 all the way till bn and this is a simple geometric representation where n equal to 2 where we want these u1 and all the way till un to be orthogonal to each other so we want to identify how we can go from b1 to u1 b2 to u2 and bn to un now if you recall that whenever we were talking about change of basis we were always given that how our new basis is going to look like so we were more interested to identify the transformation matrix if we have to go from basis b1 b2 to c1 c2 and so on but here question is different that is we are trying to identify what those bases would look like so what we will do we will take one of these bases as the benchmark so we will say that let us say that b1 is our basis with respect to what we will calculate all other vectors so what we will do we will try to project this vector b2 on b1 and we will call this particular projection up to here as u1 and we will say that a perpet uh, an orthogonal projection to u1 can be represented as u2 and our interest is to find u1 as well as u2. Now if you look at b2 from the, from the vector addition we, would, we know that u1 plus u2 is equal to b2 and if b1 b2 are already orthonormals uh, not orthonormals but at least have the magnitude equal to 1 we can simply say that u1 can be represented by b1 and the question from about u2 can be addressed from we can say that u2 equal to b2 minus u1 and in this case if you look at the magnitude of u1 that should be the projection of b2 on b1 so we can always write u2 as b2 minus pi which denotes the orthogonal of projections pi of b2 on b1 which in this case is also equivalent to u1 so we can write this as u2 equal to b2 and we have learned that once we need to determine the lambda times b2 if we want to take the projection of b2 and this lambda in turn can be calculated as u1 transpose uh, sorry u1 multiplied by u1 transpose divided by square of l2 norm here 
and if we are interested in the projection we can simply write u2 as b2 minus u1 u1 transpose upon u square multiply the multiply by the vector of which we want to find the projection which is b2 in this case now we have determined what is u1 so u1 in our case was equivalent to b1 u2 is now calculated if we know the value of u1 we can easily calculate u2 and u3 now can be calculated as b3 minus projection of b2 on 1 so we can write this as pi of b2 on u1 minus pi of u2 on b2 and similarly we can write for any vector k it as bk minus pi u1 p2 minus pi u2 b2 all the way till pi u k minus 1 b k minus 1 so what we are doing here is that we are taking one vector at a time taking its projection on everything else and basically we are saying is that when we add up all these things together we should get the original vector and this is the orthogonalization that we powerfully use whenever we have to either project the vectors onto multiple subspaces and this construct help us make a basis orthonormal as uh, orthogonal and if we divide each of these vectors by their magnitude we end up with the orthonormal basis now that we understand that these projections are really useful for various operations specifically when we want we are interested to identify the shortest length or or the projections where losses are minimal another question arises why we learn them in machine learning and what is the relationship with some of the machine learning approaches we are familiar with now let us try to get the feeling of why these projections are important using two example one motivated by linear regression and one motivated by principal component analysis now we have learned in linear regression we are given certain points that is if we have two orthonormal bases x1 and x2 and there are certain points which lie in r square space and our objective is to find a line which minimizes not the orthogonal projection but the projection that maps the value of each point on this line which we call as y hat equal to mx plus c and in this case y hat for for convenience i will write this as original y and this is our x so y equal to mx plus c where our c is the intercept now what we are doing here you if you see carefully we are not taking the orthogonal projections but we are taking projection of some sort we are saying is that whatever value is below that that should be our value of y hat 1 that whatever is the value here that should be the value of y hat 2 and our objective is to minimize the difference that we observe in y1 minus y1 actual value and here we will typically take the l2 norm and hence we call as root of mean of square of errors because if you remember the definition of l2 norm if you expand that you are essentially going towards the root of mean of square of error and we will keep on doing it for all the points if we have n number of points we will write this expression repeatedly all the way for y n hat minus y n and when we talk about minimization of this summation we are also minimizing the mean error that's where root of mean of square of error comes in so we say that minimize 1 upon n summation i equal to 1 to n y i minus y i square and here we say that we are minimizing the losses around y but let us also take the same example and try to build a perspective that what what would happen if we take the orthogonal projection so we again have a same setup where we have y hat y here and x here and now we try to identify a line that minimizes the losses from but taken by the orthogonal projection so these are the original points that i would say represented by y1 y2 y3 and so on 
and now I take the orthogonal projection such that if this is my basis or the one dimensional line on which I am projecting the projection or the difference we learned that this can be written as uh, B minus vector so x y vector here if I draw a vector I can locate it by x y so basically this line would if we draw a perpendicular would have the magnitude of b minus x y or we can simply state that this is a x vector for the sake of simplicity if we drop the the vector symbols from here so let me drop this vector symbol from here these are just coordinates representing the x1 vector now when we do the similar kind of mathematics here where we say that now our objective is to minimize the overall loss or the average loss that we would incur between y1 and the projection of y1 on the basis b or the line of interest we are essentially solving the problem of principal component analysis where idea is to determine what would be that basis should i draw this particular line here or here or somewhere else so that this loss is minimum and when we go towards hunting for this b under certain constraints we are essentially looking for the principal directions or principal components and later on we will see that when we try to minimize this and find the argument that would minimize this expression we are essentially hunting for the b or the best directions that would minimize this losses when we take the orthogonal projection so the key takeaway here is that linear regression and principal component analysis they are closely related the way we can formulate the problem however they are essentially different because in one case we are talking about the orthogonal projections and in another case we are talking about the simple values that would fall under their shadows which becomes the case of linear regression now we would learn that these b's they fall along the direction of the eigen vectors and to understand principal component analysis in comprehensive way we have to get ourselves familiar with eigen values and eigen vectors which would be topic of discussion of subsequent videos in next lecture we will solve one quick example that how this gram smith orthogonalization works so that we get a good feeling how to solve a few examples that we would encounter in various literature thank you